Welcome back in. We're here for the Collegiate Championship semifinals. We've already had two spectacular games out of our two teams. Converse University taking that second one, while Bay State College, they might have taken the first one, but how do you bounce back after a loss like you suffered in game two? Well, I hope one of them is getting more collegiate, uh, like the, the band doing uh, Get Jinxed. That's a really good rendition. It's classic. I love that it. That is true. That is very true. But you know what's more important than that? What's even cooler? Probably the bands playing the in game. Okay. Well, the bands in League of Legends. True. Because right there, Trinamir getting banned again. Same with Karma. But a change finally occurs from the side of Face State. And it's not the one that I expected. I thought it would be Ezreal that they took away from Scary Jerry finally. But they instead banned Renata early. Yeah, and I wonder if this is going to be, again, more of seeing Gwen first pick here for Bay State as Wukong is going to hit the table again. And so what does this vi free up? It's Victor that is not hitting on the on the ban table here. So what does Bay State go for? They're going to go for the the Gwen like we've been it talking about and been Gwen. seeing? Or are they going to try and pick up a, that mid matchup in either the Ari or the Victor? I, it's got to be the Gwen. I don't see any rhyme or reason not to go for Gwen here, especially because sure. Panther has struggled into that matchup. He's picked the Fiori each time so far and it has not done nearly wow. as successful but they do change they go for Ari early and I think this will be really good for, for Bay State because we haven't really seen Panther play Gwen either and at least on red side Converse are always going to be picking one or the other either the Ezreal or the Volley Bear and so now what does Bay State kind of get taken away from them? They're going to be able to keep the Gwen on the blue side. They're going to be able to kind of pick up another strong AD carry and instead. Oh. Again, look, it's the Volley Bear and maybe it's not the Ezreal, but it's Vex here that's for the counter matchup. That's the one that surprises me because I don't see Vex as a pure counter sure. to the side of Ari. Sure, if you land your ult, you're, you're going to be able to follow up Spirit Rushes, get a good fear off afterwards. But there's a lot of skill that comes down to lane phase. And that's when we've seen Serenok the strongest. Exactly, especially when it comes to specifically a 1v1 matchup. I think this should go in favor of, of Bay State and Dragonman picks up his only sin. This jungle 2v2 is incredibly potent. You want resets, you want kills. Well, Lee Sin Ari is the one to do it. And Radar, while having a oh. good game last time around, wasn't, you know, still can be kind of prey to that, especially early on against Saranok. And here, with that Ezreal taken away from Scary yeah. Jerry, you know, who needs to ban it if you just take it away there and make sure you can't play it? You get a free ban, you kind of free up a ban, you get to also take it away from Scary Jerry. So what is he going to look for? A lot of magic damage. I assume that Converse are going to go towards a support here, a little bit more of uh, engage. And Nautilus is still available, which Rox really hasn't gotten his hands on. Well, the thing is, too, with this Ezreal, while we're so focused on Scary Jerry playing this, it is the second most played champion by Soft Stage in his yep. entire career. So this is something that he's got a lot of practice on, and it will go against Scary Jerry instead on Kai'Sa. And hopefully he will have to make good on that practice as against Kai'Sa, this is kind of a free matchup for Kaisa for the most part. Like in early lane, first 15 minutes, Kaisa doesn't have all that much damage. But instead, now the Ezreal is just going to. This is basically, again, you look at base state. I want to see them proactive, looking for plays. I want from Converse to start getting rid of maybe either the top lane matchups or the engaged supports from Sword Blue. And. Honestly, I would have expected that to be the ban here instead of this Renekton that's been denied from Panther for the third time in a row and in the same position, the same yeah. ban slot each and every time. With, with that Gwen Gwen on the other side ban, now making it so that Bajani's got to play something different. I'm wondering if you just, on the side of Converse, ban top lane again. Yeah, what else would you be setting up for, right? Like, you could get rid of his Fiora. Maybe he goes for a Jax. It is instead the Fiora, right? So... Now Panther kind of moving into different territory. We're getting a fully new set of top lane bands. Like, is Panther going to pull out the Camille? Is he going to be pulling out something like the Aatrox that we've seen from Bajani? Right, that's kind of what I'm curious about as well. I think you just go for the support, save that counter pick for uh, Panther. You got the Jax, you got the Camille. And I expect Bajani to look towards that Camille, which a Jax would do excellently into. Yeah. Let's see it. I, I'm I'm interested. Obviously, we've even now seen rocks on his Nautilus, something that he has a ton of comfort on and has found a lot of wins for his team. So Bay State, they're going to be able to pick up the Aatrox here for Bajani is something that they mm. we saw in their quarterfinals. What does Converse go for? I mean, with Wukong gone, the, you could take like a pretty bad matchup if you really want to try and play for a team fight in the NAR. 
Uh, I don't know. Yor is like gone. That. Like, yeah, it looks like the Nar is going to be their answer, but I don't know how I really feel about that. I, I want to see Panther play something he's more comfortable with that can also win the lane phase a bit better, where yeah. he can try to gain more advantages on his own because base state haven't really been looking to play it around the top side, but neither has Converse. And most of it has just been Bajani winning the 1v1, right? Like, yeah. without any jungle presence, obviously sometimes he is able to pull Dragon Min, but the leads that he is generating are all by himself. It is Panther maybe overextending. And as the Aatrox, this is gonna be a little tough in the first few levels, but if you're able to find sweet spot cues, Gnar just gets obliterated. And that's why I'm worried about this pickup, but looking like you had talked about at the entirety of the team, that is why it is picked. It is the Converse special, the team fight aspect that they always see as the tried and true. And again, we've, we've been talking about it. We saw it now two games in a row. Who cares about jungle at this point? The level ones between bot lanes. That's all that matters in this matchup. At the, like It determines the game. Game one, it was for base state, and now game two, Ezreal and uh, Braum for the side, or Ezreal Renata for Converse, they just took yep. over the map. And here, Kaisa Nautilus, a classic duo in yeah. the bot lane going up against Ezreal Braum, something we've seen in the past, but not gonna have that, wow, the pizzazz that you see from something like Kaisa Nautilus that looks for the level one fights, that looks for the early aggression. What do you mean, Nautilus? I mean, he, no, he no, gets I'm the plasma. The, I'm oh, saying the, Ez the Ezreal Braum oh, for that. Well, it worked for Converse, so they're like, well, Maybe we should try. We should get a little bit of a taste from that. And then this is obviously now a different look for Sword Blue as well, that is right? True. More defensive, more about the team, more about being someone who can help peel and defend as we dive into the rift for our third game, tied up at one apiece in the semifinals. Base State, they've changed a lot more this time around, and same with Converse. But it feels like they both still are playing around the same identity, the earlier game, the lane phase for Pace State and the team fights prowess for Converse. And it may be, you know, this is a bit of a stylistic change for Base State, right? Because yesterday, or yesterday in their quarterfinals versus UCI, Sword Blue was roaming. We haven't seen all that much of this this series so far. Even in game one, Sword Blue was hammering away at Scary Jerry and Rocks and made some attempts to go to other lanes. But yesterday, it was the likes of the Leona where he's just constantly yeah. going into Saranox lane. The Braum stylistically feels more in line with this, with what we've seen. Mm -hmm. And looking at the positioning right now, I'm curious to see if we actually have a potential where instead of looking for the level one out of uh, base state where they try to play maybe more passively, into Scary Jerry and Rocks purely for the fact that they can move around that Braum, try to see if they can help out Saranok. I mean, they don't really need to help out Saranok. We've already seen that he's more than comfortable in this mid lane. He can generate his own leads. It's just a matter of transitioning that to other parts. Getting Dragon Min, I think, involved is really important for True. me. How does Saranok activate his jungler to help him? And it's like, help me help you at this well, point. I think it, and I think it goes back to Sword Blue. I think that's kind of what they need is to bring up something like that to really make sure they're getting Dragon Min off the ground early. Early. At the moment, we're not seeing the level one fight yet. Not yet. Actually, not yet. it's gone. It's complete. Like at this point, like they could fight for a level two, and it seems like Base State are gonna do that. A lot of damage landing onto Scary Jerry, and I like this coming out from Coach Chad. Getting this ward, I think it's a little bit shallow. You kind of want it a little closer to the Raptor pit, but making this gank oh, level the one. Flash in on a soft sage. He's got a lot of damage, but it's Rocks the first casualty instead. Soft is into the all cope. All Cove Gaming between the two. Scary Jerry, he needs that kill credit to see if he can continue to carry this entire series. And a little bit of a mistake there still for Converse, despite them getting a kill in return. Scary Jerry pops the cleanse thinking he got ignited or maybe he can try to heal his support. Wasn't quite the case there. So Coach Jad, Taking our advice, we are doing level two things on Volley Bear. That is I some like of the it. strength of this champion when you have it. But I think Rox just pulled the trigger a bit too soon. True. It was a great hook, but there was no follow up because Coach Jad wasn't in the position just yet. Oh! Oh, I love the hook spell there, Rox. But this charm here connecting on a radar, even with you in the vicinity, just means that Saranox survives and he thwarts your attempt. And I think right now, Rox actually needs to stay in this mid lane because after Dragon Min is going to be finishing his red buff, he can just come mid and they can look for a kill, force out either the flash or maybe even force a recall to get the TP out of him. I agree. I think he should have stuck around 
But at the moment, it seems like it might be the right call because he has to defend oh. Scary Jerry, who got stunned up by concussive blows. And Coach Chad right there on the wings is too little, too late. Rox now has the Spider-Man back to safety. Wow, okay. And so instead, Dragonman decides, I want to try and go for a full clear of my jungle. Coach Chad, he's overextending for a lot of kills. Panther's really far up and yeah, maybe running it down. Right now, he actually has a good advantage and he's really poking at Pajani. Yep, just happens to be that when you are ranged versus melee, this is exactly what you expect to see from the matchup. So finally, Panther having a much better time in the laning phase yeah. uh, up against the Johnny. I didn't think he would. I thought it would be a little bit more difficult. I, you know, especially with Nar, how he's easy to kind you of. You thought Pajani was going to hands diff him? Yeah, I did. Okay. Well, more just because we, well, that or just make sure that Panther wasn't having a nice time in lane, constantly shoving him in, making sure the Snar was not having a fun time. And now I want to see what Dragon Min's decision making is going to be. Panther going mega, doesn't quite land the stun, but he has a lot of, both of them have a ton of minions. Look at where both of the junglers are. They're going to try and cancel his recall here as this wave is crashing. Dragon Min, can he find the kill? Oh, Coach Jan vision. did not cancel that. So now that they've noticed Dragon Min is there, maybe they're thinking that they could have turned to play instead. So. Like you said, the vision is enough for them to escape, but maybe they're regretting that decision because they could have gone for another fight. But look at this now, right now, Dragonman, he had none of his camps on bot side, so he's taking the longest road card all the way up yeah. into his top side jungle, throws up the thumbs up. All the meanwhile, Coach Chad, he's gonna pick up some of his farms, he's gonna finish his camps, and naturally will be able to push into this lane now. He could either go for his Raptors or even move into Scuttle because of mid lane right now. Bot lane? Unusual to see that Scary Jerry and Rocks are really suffering in this lane. A good wave state has been picked up by the side of base state to keep them suffering, to keep them low on experience. Look at Rocks. He's only level two. The roam that he attempted in mid lane has come back to haunt him. Yeah, he couldn't stay in lane, right? Scary Jerry's already dead, so what am I gonna do? I'm just gonna hold this mini wave. Might as well just look mid, look for a play. It obviously didn't work out. And like you were saying, there is a small experience differential between the two, two supports. Waiting till we see them hit level six. And Scary Jerry should make up a lot of the difference. Should be able to catch that minion wave, get a lot of gold into his inventory and pocket to keep up with that Asofa Sage. But it's still a loss for the mo moment. Not having that explosive bot lane that we've seen from game one and game two out of Scary Jerry and Rocks. It's definitely a difference, and now we get to finally see the mid laners take a move out. It looks like he's jiggling, just trying okay. to bait Radar. for this. Saranok and Dragon Min. Nice fear, but here's Dragon Min. The flash away, Whoa. but the charge still connected. And with Jord Blue in the vicinity, they can keep re-engaging over and over again. With a nice fear, tripled up by Radar. He's got a long distance uh. to get away, and it's not long enough for him to fall. With Scary Jerry and Rock having rotated up into the jungle, trying to see if they can defend the best they can. They got one kill on Rocks, and Scary Jerry, even if Sword Blue is low, could not turn it around. Everyone goes down with the ship. Panther uses the ultimate. Pajani. Pajani has got his own ultimate, the World Stop. Ender, chasing off Panther. Both sides wanting the fight, wanting to keep this going, especially with a massive minion wave for Panther, but holding off on it. Oh, Pajani, now but. See, the Panther is now in mini. This is much harder, thanks to the hyper procs that we're seeing coming out from Minar. But that entire fight that we just saw from base eight is exactly oh. what we needed. Wait a minute. Ooh, Whoa. the sweet spots, the Johnny. That's what I expected to see. Slams down the Q. The third one doesn't even have time from Panther's side to flash out of it. That's a solo kill from the top laners. You called it magical. We were expecting it. And Panther does have yet another hard time in this lane. It was only a matter of time, I suppose. Only a matter of time. It's Bajani, someone that I kind of went into the series expecting to be good, but not spectacular. Not someone who's going to outright dominate his lane opponent. Has been just so Look at the teleport lane. Top of stage. He's shut down by Scary Jerry, giving a lot of gold over to the side of Scary Jerry. He's always scary. But the fact that Bajani's here to make sure they can answer that. Coach Chad into the alcove. Bajani, you, you can see there, like, yeah, give Bajani more gold, give him more kills. It is a long roundabout way to actually get to that point. And Sword Blue, he could try to chase it, but Bajani thankfully gets it. Waste his time 2022. 
too. You love to see coming out from the side of Converse. A lot of exactly. And look at this top wave, right? Like Dragon Man, he wants to go for this dragon, and so now they have to rotate Ezreal up into this wave. Scary Jerry is picking up level six during the meantime. Oh, what? what a hook from Rock to chase down Serenox. He will survive, but give crack what do. But Dragon Man here to capitalize on the mistake. Make sure they punish them. He's got another one, and the charm from Saranok lands. It stopped Radar from putting down damage in that last trade. That's why they weren't able to finish off Saranok. Incredibly well played from the mid laner of Bay State College. Saranok has been playing out of his mind yes. in this series. Even in their last last game, he still was holding strong. And here on this Ari, he is looking invincible. Is it Saranok or is it Ari? I guess we'll find out. Maybe it's Maybelline at the end, but they're able to now pick up this Rift Herald in the meantime. Coach Chad, he's like, oh, I can't do anything. Rox is like, hey, that bot wave that I missed. Sorry, Radar, I'm going to take the experience on that one. We go back, we see that there's a fight over the Rift Herald. They get secured by the he side of Converse. Base State. Converse did not get it. Oh, he did, did he? Oh, he landed the smite. Oh, he did it's land a smite oh. steal. Thank you, Observer. Thank there you, we thank go. You. All right, well, that's a win. Obviously, Coach Chad, is a, it's a Pyrrhic victory at the end of the day. They right. did have to end up giving over their juggler and a kill over to Dragon Min, which could be problematic. We have Ocean Dragon. He's already pathing towards bot side. And Saranok, I don't know if he's going to go for a reset here or even start up this Dragon play. You already see that the rest of the team is starting to redeploy and get ready for this fight. And with that Rift Herald in... Coach Chad's pocket, there is a potential for them to be the ones to set up the dragon fight instead. Get more gold, especially to scary Jerry, deny Dragon Min from having that angle to really use that wallet he's built up for himself against Converse. But even with the pings now, they're not just quite ready. With no PPs from the top laner, it will be a 4v4 fight. We'll have to see if they're actually able to even connect onto this, right? Like, look at what Panther's doing. He's pushed the wave. He wants to try and go for a recall, but Bajani's going to draw him back in. He's gonna look for a solo kill. This would be very cheeky of him to do, but like you were saying, they pulled out the dragon now. Converse will have this objective in their back pocket. Dragon Sword man. Blue, I don't know if he's able to do this. It's in vision, can he make the steal? Looking for it, Sonic Wave connects. They just have to wait out the timer. There's gonna be the true shot for Rod. Now Good. the Converse is down to get the smite secure on the objective. First Dragon going over to Converse, but now they have to get out of here. They're getting peppered by Sofa Sage yet again on their retreat. Some of the best patience I think we've seen from Converse, right? Just wait. You don't actually have to do anything. There's no pressure from the enemy team for you to immediately burst down the dragon. Don't give any chance for Bay State to try to go for a steal. And, you know, despite all of this, remember, it is Converse who are down gold. It is Bay State who's up 4,000 gold thanks to lane advantages, finding some kills, specifically the bot lane going a little bit better this time around for them uh, in game three. And Saranok, again, is that guy that we're looking towards from Bay State. The back and forth with these games in the series were in game one, Bay State had this kind of lead, then game two is Converse, who had this big lead at 11 minutes, and now back to Bay State College. Looking hot on this top half of the map, and even though Soviet Sage is in a better position, looking at the gold difference than They're any even. other of the games that have happened so far in this split, yeah. I'm still looking to Scary Jerry, still looking to this Kaisa to pop off in some of the skirmishes that might come soon, especially because you have juicy targets like Pajani and Dragon Mint. Uh, yeah, of course, when we talk about Converse, that is just the name of the game all the time. Scary. Waiting for Scary Jerry to pop off, waiting to see him in team fights. Well, Bay State, they're kind of just going to be playing on their first couple of items, right? Saranok is going to be finishing his Everfrost soon. You see that Sophus Sage, he already finished his Trinity Force. So mm -hmm. Ezreal and the like, his entire squad is ready to go, ready to kind of scrap and push their lead early on. Observers. Showing that Sword Blue has stuck himself, same with Dragon Men, into the jungle. They're going for a long roundabout way for this potential gank in the lot lane, but the fact that Tyrannok now gets spotted out, Scary Jerry and Rock are booking it back towards the turret. They're wise to the attempt that base state were going for. Thankfully, there was no wave. If maybe there's like a Tristana who can easily clear this wave and push it against someone like the Kaisa, then we have a different story, but. Right now, Bay State, they're trying to look for something before any of the objectives are spawning. You still have three minutes, so there's real no there's no real draw from Converse to step out into uncomfortable positions or fog for. 
But I also think that base state, this is perfect for them as well. They're just getting these slow incremental leads. They're making it a slow burn for Converse who continue to fall behind. They're farming underneath their turrets. They're not having the best trades. They're forced to recall consistently. Like right there, Panther just taking the worst end of the trade. Of course, you will get at least some back on Vajani. But you can see how difficult that is for it all to stick. There we go. Two and a half minutes before, they want to try and get plates for their bot lane so that they can get gold, they can reset. But look at this already. Both sides, their mid laners are coming. Dragon Mint is here. Saranok will be there before Radar. Far. Yeah, he's playing out a ward the whole time. And now Shelly looks for the charge, but the fight had already began on the other side. With Softest jumped on, but still alive. The flash is coming in. It was Kaisen to pick up a kill with the charge. Here's Radar, the though. Turn all around onto the jungle. The Radar not connecting on the ult. Instead, it's Scary Jerry who's taken low because he has no mana to really fight back. A nice spear shot wow. picked up by Radar. But here comes the resets from Saranok taking down Radar with the help of Dragon Min. And in the picture in picture, Bajani gets the flash out from his lane opponent and will now have time to wail away at this turret. Panther not having a good time this entire series up against Bay State College's top laner. Small incremental advantages for the side of Bay State in this game. Even if they're not getting every fight and every kill, they're getting every advantage. They're getting small wins here and there. It's a numbers win in that last fight bot lane. It is now they stopped the Rift Herald. It got absolutely nothing, nothing for Converse. So with a minute left to spare, they really wanted to get a little bit more gold on the Scary Jerry. Let him maybe finish an additional component. Maybe get him a finished boots upgrade. That would have been nice to have. But instead, all they have to show for it is, hey, we got maybe a kill here. And they still have their summoner spell. Scary Jerry and Radar having their flashes are going to be super important for this battle break. That is one benefit for the side of Converse. Yeah. The fact that they have those available, they'll soon have a lot of their alts up as well. Even looking at Panther, he's got TP, can always join in a fight, and having that Gnar finally join up with the team that it was built around, that was really why they had drafted him in the first place, could be where Converse can turn this game around. And Converse have a few options here, right? Like they're putting a lot of vision into the bot side, but you do have the Rift Herald spawning in a minute. So I wonder which team is going to be uh, kind of going for these as I think Converse want to get a second attempt at a Rift Herald, right? Like mm -hmm. let's make good on maybe where the first one was lacking or just go for this Mountain Drake. I think that the gold worth that you'll be getting, obviously the dragon is more damage a little bit later. It's a scaling element where the uh -huh. Rift Herald gives you gold now, gives you power immediately. And that's something Converse need now. They need their money now. Because they are still falling behind. It's 3,000 that separates the two teams at 15 and some change in time. The fact that they don't have advantages outside of Scary Jerry is a worrying trend that we oh. see consistently, especially like right there where Radar just falls to the wayside. Both solo laners of Bay State, they want to get revenge after that last game. They were they are not happy about the result not of that last one. And Bajani's like, I keep winning my lane. We need to be winning more games. Saranok follows up on that fine. And Radar, not flashing, not respecting the damage, not respecting that Saranok could be there. Opens up the play okay. for them to get Dragon. Bit of a skirmish here in the top lane. World Ender. The fact that you have World Ender up and Bijani, has got a 2-0 lead over Panther. He's got every sweet spot connecting. Radar and Panther, the Nelson brothers, they're psychically linked because they are uh, siblings and both of them are not having a great time in this third game. Not at all, not at all. Bajani looking strong here on this Aatrox, but so is the rest of the top side of the map. Whoa. Radar went in on top of stage, flashed away, and Coach Chad, who is nearby, could try to fight this back. Whoa, a snipe stop. in from top of stage. He'll fall, but he traded back alive. So because of the top lane kill, it means that now base state college, they can only get the top turret, but they can get the Rift Herald on the back end of that play. And Radar, in another instance, where he stays a little too long, stays weak within range of Ezreal, gives over a kill to Safa Sage, making it a one-for-one -one trade and still in favor of base state. And for base state, this is pretty much how they like to play, especially yep. in this series. Look at the top side, top jungle mid. No deaths across the board for them. The only ones suffered were at the hands of Scary Jerry, but at this rate, you're all take this. Scary Jerry is not that far ahead like he has been in the previous games. And even still, Soft Sage is actually in a good position on this Ezreal. Exactly. He's going to be able to mash, but again, it is about scaling for the side of Converse. When we say scaling, it doesn't mean 
go down zero to one and five, right? Like oh, you can doesn't? still go even. Oh, I should stop doing that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That. Definitely in solo queue, if you're trying to scale, it is about trying to mitigate losses in the early game and set yourself up for success with more time and more gold on to whatever carries. Once Scary Jerry is able to finish his second item, which I assume is going to be coming up soon, looks like a Phantom Dancer or maybe That's what a I would Collector. Imagine. I mean, that is where we're looking. In three minutes, that is where I'm specifically looking for Converse to wake up and find wins. But as for base state, we've got a good state of this game, good control. You can see that even if it's not really in the vision that they have, it's in the lane. They've got low with turrets on both sides in mid and bottom. Flash in from Rock did not Flash. connect on top shade. But at least they got one ult to connect. Looking for the regain. Did not fear, but a nice kill instead from top of Sage. Puts the trade back in on the radar. And Panther, you're too late. It's not a fight anymore. You lost the fight 4v5 and you showed up just to die. And unfortunately, unlike the Ezreal from last game for Converse, Kaisa has super low range compared to the Ezreal. You cannot engage. Oops. Chad, He's done. back in by the chains, even if he has stopwatch available. It is Vishani's rampage in game three. A nice flash in will force out both Scary, Jerry, and Panther, so the tier one will fall at the hands of base state. And Converse do not have a tough enough front line to buy space for Jerry. It just means that everyone, yet again, falls around him. Radar not able to find the pick on the softest stage. Same thing with Rocks. They're over the wall, and Kaisa's not able to hit any of the relevant targets. We'll check it again in this replay. Watch Scary Jerry as we've done all throughout the day. Scary Jerry is just standing here, not doing any damage. It is all on Saranok. It is all on Snark Blue as well. They are pumping out DPS. Scary just running away. He pretty much wasn't able to do anything in that fight. No Akathian rain, no projectiles thrown out. He was zoned completely away. Yeah, and even in this fight, look at what Again. Sword Blue does. He stands in front, like he it. lands the shield, and so even any of the damage that maybe Scary Jerry could have done, it's mitigated. Yeah, completely body blocked by Brom. He had everyone stand behind him, and now Face State have a fantastic lead. They are up, what is that, 6,000 gold here at 20 minutes of the game, and make it more, because they just killed Panther so easily. Oh, there's another 300 gold in their back pocket. Base State are going to continue this. Looking for Coach Jad. Might be even more than 300 you were talking about if they continue this fight 4v4. Keep in mind, Bajani doesn't have the TP, so Converse could have looked for a fight, could have attempted something, but they are still so far behind. And now, what lane or what jungle camps is Co uh, Coach Jad going to be able to pick up, right? You have your top side quadrant gone. Uh, are they going to make this flank okay. here, buying space for Scary Jerry? Or are they just going to look for the turn around okay. on a sword well, blue? They got a nice jump in, and they're looking to see if that killer instinct is enough. Vijani shows up, and he could turn this around. Look at Saranok. Colonel Jane, but Saranok's flank is huge. Splitting up the fight, forcing everyone to just ditch Coach Chad. He's not worth saving. Scary Jerry had to use the summoner, uh, had to use his cleanse. He had already used the killer instinct to find that pick on a sword blue. The Rift Herald's gonna get dropped for base state. And now with this, they can send a few members to take over this Hextech Drake. Dragonman, what are you doing over here, buddy? You just gave a free shutdown to the side of Converse. It goes on to rocks, but gold is gold You'll nonetheless. It, yeah. And now they can attempt another fight. They can keep chasing down the remaining members of base state, especially because the dragon has spawned up its office. Uh, thankfully for the side of base hit, being purely focused on the objectives allows them to get that. Yeah, if Dragonman was just able to buy time for the Rift to crash, they're going to continue to fight. The guys are all, they're diving this turret, getting a lot of damage on Sword Blue and the Bajani. The help from Saranok does turn around two kills and Scary Jerry, the big member of Congress is gone. Flash away from radar, Coach Chad in the wings. They've lost the bot lane at for what cost, Dimitri? And Dragon Min is up, I think at the cost of the big purple worm on the rift. Baron's gonna get started here for base state. Coach Jad doesn't have flash, he doesn't have the ultimate, and with Blast Cone gone, it's merely a formality at this point that base state will be able to pick up this objective. Unless a miracle happens here, Coach Jad does not have flash, does not have a way to get inside of the Baron pit instead. 
Is waiting to see if he gets a little bit of vision. And I'm curious how you think Radar, they're gonna be able to get in there. Radar has got a nice fear there to shut down some races. Maybe it's Radar who can save this game for Converse, but he's shut down by Dragon Man. The hero is not enough for Converse. And Coach Chad, he's running into the Alco. He will die eventually, and the Baron will be secured on three members and it, of the side of base state. It's two for two, and you're up this much gold. Base state, any kills that you give, any time you go even, it is a negative trade. It is a down net worth play for you. I think the most important part, if you're a Converse, if you're trying to hold faith, is the fact that you just took Baron off of two very important members. Saranok is not going to have that buff, and neither is Sophus H on the Ezreal. So let's take a look at this again. I mean, this is just Radar from downtown. The Vex Ultimate lands. Boom, that's one. Explodes this, uh, explodes the Ezreal. And it's great job from Dragonman to secure right. the Baron because it could have very easily reset there. Exactly, and that's what I think Radar thought had happened because he continued to of look course. for the kills elsewhere. He continued to press and nearly was able to get more than just the one before him. They got the two kills, sure, but it is three that were sacrificed all in all. So now, I mean, base state, despite the a small blunder there, really aggressive trade there from Dragonman. Flash plus his ultimate. They're gonna lose a turret. They're gonna look to pressure onto the bot side. It's an objective bounty as well. So it means the turret is just a little more inherently worth for Converse, but they are now pushing onto inhibitors. And that's the problem. You got a slight bounty off that mid lane at the trade of the tier two bot, but it will be the inhibitor turret. It's getting it's mega. All not worth. Even if Scary could possibly go in, and they got the Mega Nar, they look for the okay. two kill. They've got the flank in from Rox, and they already got one kill. Make it two kill. Jump down for Radar. They chase down Sophus Sage. Triple kill for Radar. The reset fix. The nice ult, but it's not gonna help out the side of base safe. It's all oh. going to be Radar, but. Saranok at least make sure there's no more reset. Radar going a bit too far there, but a triple kill nonetheless. Converse with an insane find. Panther yet again finds some way to get into a team fight and makes the play happen. And they now have removed all the Baron buffs from this side yep. of Bay State. Being that Saranok has died in the previous exchange around wow. Baron didn't have it, <laughs> now he's got some fancy feet there against Coach Chad. We'll take the tier two in mid lane for the team. They did lose a lot in trade, giving up some advantages back to Converse. About 1,500 uh, 1, gold was what Bay State just lost there. Maybe there's some shutdowns. The turret obviously helped Bay State mitigate that loss, but uh, honestly, my eyes were on Rox, who had a flank, and Panther with that Mega Gnar ult. Just saves the game for them, or at least buys them a little bit more time in the game. A minute before this dragon, it is third Hextech Drake, which doesn't mean it's the soul, but obviously it seems like Converse, they're not willing to give this up. No TP on Radar, so That's this has nice. to be the last wave before he comes over. He, I think he's just got to go now. I don't even think you want to fully clear it. You there need it to get yourself to that objective, but granted, Dragonman was on the enemy red buff. Okay. They don't know this. They spotted out Radar. Maybe not checking the minimap. He doesn't know? No, he doesn't know. So Dragonman gets away with stealing the red buff. And with 30 seconds remaining until the dragon actually spawns, base state are still in a good position. Yeah, base state, this is what... You know, when you're down gold or when you're ahead in gold, you get to dictate the state of the game to the opponent. And right now, Converse, their only option is to look for a pick on a side lane or to try and find the uh, the Drake. But for base state, they can forego the dragon and look to pressure onto the inhibitors, one of which is open in the bottom lane. But with Panther catching the wave. Wait a minute. This TP from Radar. Yeah, what? you're just giving up the dragon completely. What? Okay, I... So, okay, look, it's not Soul, right? Yes, yeah, it is a still. second Hextech Drake, and it puts them on Soul Point. But right now, Converse, they recognize we need gold and we need it now. This is what we're talking about with the Rift Heralds, right? The immediate power of gold. Now, they need to reset. They had to kind of shadow him for the meantime. That's why we saw three members go up there. But losing this inhibitor when Baron is up in a minute is massive for Converse. And that is why Converse are putting up such a defense around all five members here in this bot lane to try to see if they can answer it. But they got to be careful because Johnny was also escorting a nice fat minion wave down mid. 
and they're going to continue to pressure this. This is why when you have all of these turrets gone, they can continue to escort these minions and make sure that you cannot leave your base for the time being. Converse playing on the edge. One wrong move, one wrong move and a good find from base state means this game is over. Tell the Converse, a little scared, a little timid to start anything off. It's so difficult unless they can have a pick like this on Dragon Min who uses the soft one. With the soft one, scary though. Both junglers in the stasis. That one kill first on the scout Shad, and they follow it up on the others. They've got soft Sage going rapid into Converse, and even if they get the trade from Radar, it is an ace completed by Base State. And they don't have a minion wave quite yet, so they'll finish off the ace. They'll get the inhibitor. Four minions. Can they get it done, Magical? The wave is to. done. They got about, what is it, 15 seconds until someone will spawn and that will be both Rox and Coach Chad. That's plenty time for them to okay. annihilate and to topple both of the structures that remain in front of the Nexus. And you can see that is exactly what they will do. Game two, base day college bounce back and now are on the precipice of finals. Base day college match point now for them. Getting ready to take it home, look to the finals to up against University of St. Thomas. And Converse, much more quiet game. The Vex didn't quite work out for Radar despite finding some picks here and then. And like we touched upon the desk, this game I think was much more an accent of Bajani this time, mm. right? His Aatrox was massive, not only finding kills in the solo lanes, but then pushing pressure on to Scary Jerry in the squad. Well, I think there needs to be a lot more attention now on to Bajani. Yes. And how great he is doing in this series. He is absolutely caring in the top side. But any matchup, he's got the Gwen, the Aatrox, he's got his meal if he needs to bust that out as well. Panther just doesn't seem like he's really got that foothold. Not yet. It, it's just been not only today, but also in the quarterfinals, right? He was not able to find any footing uh, up against MSU. So right now, they need to huddle up. They were already talking about how untiltable Panther is. Get him back into that mind state, brother. Yeah, and now it's time to hand it back over to a perfectly normal analyst desk. You could say that he is not a king, he is not a god, he is Bajani, and nothing but. Welcome back to the desk here, amigos. Uh, guys, I gotta say, right off the bat, it's seeming to be Bajani Diff in two of these games so far. Bajani has played so well. I think you could argue that he is the best top laner left in this tournament. His performances, the series, time and time and time again, have been a little bit of a top gap. I'm not gonna yeah. say, uh, you know, yesterday you said. Uh, Diffy and the Biffy. I won't say, I don't, I won't say whatever. Diffy and the Tiffy. I, I won't say whatever that is, but he's looked very consistent. Even off the Gwen this game, he's looked very impressive at, the entire time. As perfectly normal as this analyst desk is, that Aatrox performance was not normal by any stretch yeah. of the imagination, right? Yeah. I think he played it incredibly well, understood how to get his own lead, and then just you know shove it down Panther's throat. Mm -hmm. I think to to the caster's point, I do believe that they. Panther has to kind of mentally regroup and refocus in order to get into a position where Converse can be competitive for the rest of the series. I was talking to Nar here uh, <laughs> oh. during the middle of that last game, and he had a few things to say to me. One of them in specific reigned true. Uh, he said, Please stop solo killing me with your big darkened sword. <laughs> this is Nar's message to Bajani. And to the world, I and think. And to the world. <laughs> Leave Nar alone. I Where mean, was Aatrox on that? <laughs> <earlier, huh? laughs> you. Man, is there a swarm of locusts outside? Because I think the world is almost ending at this point. Honestly. With how Aatrox was performing. But Invert, if you also look at how the game started off too, you could have sworn the game almost ended too right at the beginning. Yeah, I think uh, the path from Coach Jad was actually very reasonable. You know, get the Kai'Sa ahead of the Ezreal so that the Kai'Sa can one-shot the Ezreal later so that Scary Jerry can work his magic against Sophus Sage and the rest of his team. However, after they did get that kill, Kai'Sa actually uh, did not recall, so didn't refresh uh, the resources. Scary Jerry didn't buy any new items. So Ezreal get, gets back on the map, Sophus Sage has two extra long swords to his name, is able to uh, punish the fact that not uh, that Rocks roam mid, mm -hmm. doesn't get anything out of the mid roam, comes back bottom, 
there's a kill on the board. Nautilus is level two. You know, there, there's a huge level of disadvantage and support. And then from there, the Ezreal can get rolling. The shutdown does come later, but yeah. it makes the Ezreal's lane so much easier when that kind of stuff happens and you can't get those further pop-off moments from Jerry. This is one of the, I mean, this is the first game, I think, this tournament. We haven't seen Jerry actually get a chance to pop off. I think a big thing that also ended up happening is that when Converse had that bot lane fight around the tier two, most of those kills went over to the Vex. It did not go into the pocket of the Kai'Sa, so yeah. Kai'Sa was never able to catch up from that point, like you were saying. And I did want to bring attention to the Vex, like you were saying before. Now, Raider on this pick uh, has been known to pop off previously, specifically in the game against ASU in Route 16. This is where you actually saw him have an absolutely nuts performance. And considering it was a little bit similar, he wasn't able to get the same research that we saw previously. Yeah, and I think a huge part of that is uh, Serenox Ari, right? Yeah. Getting the charm off right as the ulti is coming in mm -hmm. and having the charm kind of continue. Yeah. That's like a very specific part of this matchup that can skew towards Ari's favor. He doesn't get enough damage to actually kill the Vex afterward, Serenox that is, unless he does have DMK in his lane, getting that double kill very early on though. And I do want to give him a lot of credit because in game two, it didn't really feel like DMK was fully adjusted quite yet. But on that Lee Sin, we're, we're getting more of what we expected from this player. Dragon Min has really showed up right now. And considering how the game has actually panned out though, base state, are now one game away from moving on to the finals, you know, going up against UST. And yet again, both of these teams are not first year programs, especially when our Converse on the losing end has selected red side. I think draft is gonna be very important. And I would like to make a plea to Converse as a coach last year who was in top four down one, two. Big there is a wonderful champion. His name is Shen. <laughs> he, he is amazing. <laughs> I think that you should pick him and please get rid of uh, any three three top lane bans is also good. Uh, we lost ignore? one three in that series, by the way. You can ignore that, um, but <laughs> Ooh, potentially uh, maybe it's a different champions, yeah. maybe something more supportive in the top lane might be I, good. I, I think uh, another coach advice, uh, it doesn't have to be Shen, but I do think <laughs> getting off of these skill matchups in the top lane, like Gwen Fior, the Aatrox yeah. Nar, uh, would definitely be helpful to the cause. Yeah. Uh, but I also think further than that, like I said before, this Ari has turned out to be so important in this series. Radar pops off on it. Saranok pops off on it. I think this champion is pivotal, and if you're choosing red side, you better either have a damn good counter pick or get that champion off the table. Smax, do you also have some coach advice for the top one? No, I just have advice for Nar. I still like you, buddy. <laughs> so, that's be Bejani does not. I'm no, that, that's but, fine. No, I'm sure like they'll get over, and so will we. <laughs> Bay State, I brought the heat. We'll see if they can close it out and claim their spot in championship in game number four. We're almost to the finals, baby. Y'all stick around.